Hello everybody, um, so today we're going to be working on our Unit 7 study guide um, for our Unit 7 test coming up here pretty quickly. So we're going to go over how to create some of those graphs we talked about the last couple days. And then uh, once I help you through creating the graph, you guys will finish that part up and then go ahead and answer the questions we see about the graph. So uh, let's get started with making a histogram. So we've got an uh, a frequency table here that it gives us so we're going to use that information to make ourselves a histogram down here so it gives us a nice hint on where to start so it tells us that the lowest data item is 5 so we want our first interval to start at 5 so down here our first interval will start at 5 so we then want to find the difference in the smallest data item and the largest data item so we're just going to do that before we move ahead so our largest is 26 and our smallest is 5, so we find the difference, which is 21. So it then tells us we're going to divide that by the number of bars we want. So we can see here that we want 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 bars. So we're going to take 21 and divide it by 5. If we do that quickly, we get 4.2. So it then tells us to round up to the nearest whole number. So we're going to round that guy up to 5. So this is how many units we want each interval to have in it. So we're going to use our fingers to count out up to 5 as we count. So we want 5 of our fingers showing. So we're going to start with 5. So that's one finger. 6, 7, 8, and nine so five to nine will be our first one and then we want ten is our first finger eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so ten to fourteen and then we will go if we keep counting we'll get fifteen to nineteen twenty through twenty four and then 25 through 29. So these are the interval spaces we want, all right? So remember, we have to, <coughs> excuse me, we have a bunch of things we have to do. So uh, we have to title everything and then label our intervals and then our axes as well. So going to help you get through that and then you are going to use the information from above from our frequency table to fill in our bars. So this graph is about agents of students in a recital. So we'll just go ahead and call it that. Ages of students in a recital. Um, remember, y-axis is really easy. We just call that the frequency. And then x-axis, we will call the ages of students. So now we're going to label our intervals here. So we've got the five bars we want uh, showed up here. So first we had five through nine got 10 through 14, 15 through 19, 20 through 24, and 25 through 29. So there are intervals. And if we go check, it's looking like that the most we have in any given interval is, um, a second to count it out here so it looks like four is the most we have in any given interval so luckily we can just count up by ones here four five six seven so i'm going to go ahead and help us with our first bar so we want to label up to however many people we have in the five through nine category so five through nine we're going to have so Oh, we're given a stem and leaf plot, it looks like, to transfer. Not a frequency chart, so that's my bad. But in our 5 through 9, we've got 1, 2, 3, and 4. So remember, the 0 is our tens place. So 0, 5 is just 5. 
and then this is our tens row and our twenties row. So we have four people that were ages five through nine. So we're gonna mark up to four for our five through nine column, and we're gonna fill that in. So now what I want you guys to do is uh, keep using the t information from this uh, stem and leaf plot up here to continue to create your histogram. And then once you finish that up, I want you to answer these remaining questions here about the histogram. So go ahead and pause while you do that, and then when you hit play again, we're going to get going on the next chart. But I want you guys to pause this video and then answer these questions. Alright, so after you have paused and answered these, we're going to go to creating a line plot. So. The information we get is 20 people competed in a hot dog eating contest, and this data shows the number of hot dogs eaten by each contestant. So we're going to create a line plot here. So I'm going to help you out with uh, the first question here, number six, and then creating our line plot. Then I will have you answer the remaining questions. So what's the lowest number we have in here? Well, I see a 12. So let's just go and make sure we don't have anything smaller than 12, so we can use that. And it looks like that is our smallest number. So 12. And what is our highest number? I see a 42 there. Let's just run through and make sure we don't have anything higher than a 42. And it looks like we don't, so 42. So decide what numbers should be on our number line. Well, we don't have a crazy amount of space here, so I guess it really doesn't matter though because we'll be putting X's in between. So let's go ahead and count by ones just because that'll make our life easy here. So we've got 12. Well, we don't necessarily want to count them all out either, so let's go by twos. 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, and 42. So I could have given myself a little more space between each one here, but not a big deal. I just didn't want to count out through ones all the way from 12 to 42. So now what we're going to do is, well, we're going to start marking our X's on this thing. So we had 112 in this data set here. So we're going to put an X above the 12. And then we're just going to roll through and figure out how much of each number we have. So, our next number up appears to be 13, and I'm going to cross these out as I go so we don't get lost. And it looks like we only have one 13 in our data set, so I'm going to throw that in between 12 and 14 because that's where 13 lives. Alright, and then there are no 14s, and I see, oh, don't forget to cross that out, I see one 15. So we're going to mark an X where 15 would live. And then go ahead and we already got rid of that guy. So what you're going to do is continue to mark the X's for each number of data here. And then, <clears throat> so we said we counted by twos here, remember. So go ahead and keep filling in. So however many you have in that number, that's how many X's you're going to put above it. And don't forget the odd numbers live in between these even numbers. After you finish up this graph, go ahead and pause, and then answer 7, 8, and 9 for me. So find the range of the data, find the median, and then find the mode from your uh, line plot here. And then we're going to move on after you pause and uh, finish those to creating a stem and leaf plot. All right, so after you have answered those questions here, we're going to create a stem and leaf plot from this data here. So 
looks like for our stems, remember our stems are our tens place. So, looks like we're starting in some tens digits. So we'll start with one here. So this is gonna be our tens place. So these would be numbers like 11, 12, 13, all the way through 19. Uh, then we would have a two, so that's our twenties row. The data that lives in the twenties will be here. A three and then a four. So we want to start doing this from smallest to biggest. So I want to find the smallest number in my data set, which appears like it's going to be, uh, looks like 15 to me, nope, excuse me, 14. We have a 14 here. So the one represents my tens place in the 14, and I'm gonna put a four for a leaf. I got rid of that 14. And then we're gonna move on to 15. So I'm gonna put a five down here to represent that 15 that I have. And then a six for 16, a another six for 16. And what you're gonna do is continue to fill in this data. So once I move to, I'm gonna finish the tens row, or you are, excuse me. And then after you finish the tens row, you wanna start the twenties row, just putting in the last number of or the last digit, excuse me, of each number as you continue on. And then you'll do the 30s and then the 40s to complete this chart here, this stem and leaf plot. So after you finish up your stem and leaf plot here, you're gonna answer these three questions and then you'll be all finished up with your uh, kinda unit seven review here. And then after that, I moved the IXL from yesterday to today since today's lesson, or yesterday's lesson was a little bit longer. So go ahead after you finish this and finish up that uh, IXL, that's going to be CC2, and then turn both of these things into Canvas for me. Um, and after that, just go ahead and make sure you're not missing anything for math class, make sure you're not missing any work for any other classes, and uh, yeah, then you'll be all good. So um, go ahead and get these things taken care of, and we're going to have our unit 7 test on Monday. So go ahead and read through your notes once or twice over the weekend to help yourself uh, with our test that's coming up. Uh, thanks and have a great day and I will see you guys on Monday.